What do you think is worth it, guys? Do you think I should buy 10 funky bags or should I buy one Birkin 25? Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. I'm almost at 15,000 subscribers. If you could subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. It would be just really cool to see that 15K number and it would be an amazing goal for me to reach. I wanted to talk about today how, well, I've been really wanting to buy Birkin 25, but you know, they are not cheap. On um, the boutique, it is close to 20,000 Australian dollars and pre-loved, it could be, you know, well above that as well. And sometimes, you know, in my downtime, I get distracted by other bags luring me in, telling me to buy them. And I wanted to talk about 10 bags that I could buy today instead of a Birkin 25 that pretty much adds up to a Birkin 25, if not a little bit less than a Birkin 25. And let me know guys, what do you think is worth it? Buying one extremely special bag that is very, very expensive or a few like less expensive bags that are still special because, you know, just because it's more expensive doesn't mean that it's better necessarily. Although I have really wanted a Birkin 25 for a pretty long time. I do have a Birkin 30, which honestly, um, I don't wear that much, but I just think it's cool to have. So I feel like as a handbag enthusiast, I would love to have a Birkin 25 one day. And a Birkin 25 would be rather expensive and I would probably have to uh, not buy any other bags anytime soon. There has been a lot of bags this year that have tempted me and I want to talk about them today and ask you guys, would it have been better for me to buy these 10 other bags or just one Birkin. So first bag that is distracting me lately is the Marc Jacobs Takashi Murakami tote bag. Now I don't even know what this looks like guys but in my previous video I talked about how Marc Jacobs is bringing back the Steven Sprouse graffiti in his Marc Jacobs tote bag and he is said to uh soon do a collaboration with Takashi Murakami again similar to when he did with Louis Vuitton. So I am in high, everyone is highly anticipating what this tote bag is going to look like. The Takashi Murakami Marc Jacobs tote bag. And I'm guessing it's going to retail for around the same price as the graffiti one. So around 800 Australian dollars. It's rather affordable for, you know, a fancy bag or a designer-ish bag. I would say Marc Jacobs is contemporary. Nonetheless, it, it all adds up. If you keep buying these like little contemporary bags here and there, they can honestly add up to a whole Birkin. Yes, guys, it's true. If you buy 20 contemporary bags, that is one Birkin. So I feel like if I buy this Marc Jacobs tote bag, like whether it's the graffiti one somehow or the Mur Murakami one, that might send me down a spiral of collecting more because once I pop guys, I just can't stop. I have to keep going with the collecting. So I'm worried that if I dip my toe into this, it may ignite some sort of like other obsession. So yes, um, that is one bag. Second bag is the Coach Swing tote bag. Now, I have been seeing this a little bit on my social media, the Coach Swing Zip tote bag, and I just love the simple silhouette of it. I love how it's a shoulder bag, and I love how people decorate this bag with bag charms. It has recently been launched in Australia as well in the white colour and this pistachio green colour, which is really cute. I'm tempted to buy it. I do think that the bubblegum colour is the cutest, which is not yet in Australia, which is kind of similar to my Belide bag, so I don't know why I need it, to be honest, but it is just such a cute little shoulder bag. And again, similar to the Marc Jacobs bag, it doesn't break the bank. It's like $700. I think even if you buy it online, you could probably use a coupon code and get it for less. So, mmm tempting right so a lot of you guys have been saying I should buy this bag because it seems like something I would like but as I said if I if I start buying contemporary bags guys I don't know if I'll be able to control myself next bag is the mini garden party bag from Herm sorry guys I sneezed from Hermes now if you go on the Hermes website you can see there is like a mini garden party sneaked in the garden party section or description page and I think the mini garden party is going to be really cute I do have a garden party 30 in the Nagonda leather and I really love this bag I use it a lot but something about the mini one is just such a cute little thing you know anything in mini size is just there's some novelty aspect of it that makes me want to have it so I don't know how much this is going to cost but I'm guessing like at least four thousand Australian dollars right because this one is now what like six thousand ish I know or five thousand I don't know I can't remember now 
in the store. So yeah, I would probably want to buy the mini garden party bag from the boutique if I was lucky enough to score one. And that would be $4,000, which is still nowhere near a Birkin price. So yeah, I could literally get a Mark ja Jacobs tote, the coach swing bag, and the mini garden party, and that still wouldn't equal a Birkin. Okay, add on to that. This is another silly bag. Um, I do love Jelly Cats, and I noticed that Jelly Cat are launching these new tote bags with bare faces, and I thought that'd be such a cute, like, laptop bag, or just, like, a cute bag. I don't know, just, like, even if I go to yoga class, I can wear that. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I have been tempted to buy this Jelly Cat bag. Um, it comes in a smudge bare face, and then there's also a bunny, and there's going to be a Bartholomew bear as well. So I believe this bag is going to cost like at least $100, maybe even $200 in Australian money because Jelly Cat is actually very expensive as a soft toy, but I do love it. So I have been tempted to, to get a Jelly Cat bag. Next is a plume bag. So another plume. I'm lately super obsessed with the plume bag. I can't get enough of my plume 32 in the blue jean color. And sometimes you can get plume bags in size 32 for really good deals, like under 3000 Australian dollars. So I would buy another one of these plume bags in like a red or like a bright green or something like that, just because I it's similar to like the coach zip tote it's just like a really cute bag you can just chuck all your bag charms on and put your things inside or i'd even go for a different shaped uh plume because i do have a, a mini plume bag as well and i know that in the past they did other shapes of plume bag like more of an east west silhouette and different sizes so it is a cute bag that i really enjoy and if I found one for like 3000 Australian dollars, then yes, that could be really cool. I also really like the Victoria bag from Hermes, which is a similar shoulder bag style. And sometimes you can find them for really good deals as well. I've, I really like the color like bamboo or something in that bag. I don't know if I'd go for like E-Tube or like a neutral color. I think getting a Victoria bag in like a funky color would be so cool. And again, it would just be like a really easy casual style. And three to four thousand dollars, I could definitely get a Victoria bag like that. Um, on the website Vault Luke's, there is currently a Louis Vuitton vintage Marilyn bag, and this is from the Murakami collection. Uh, they've listed it for 1500 Australian dollars, and I think this Maryland bag is just so cute. The condition looks really amazing, and I don't always see it in the multicolor noir. So, you know, guys, I used to collect Takashi Murakami Louis Vuitton, and honestly, a part of me is, like, wanting to go back there and collect it again, but I feel like that would just be a very expensive rabbit hole that I don't want to go down again, and this is why I sold all my Louis Vuitton bags, because if I have one thing of like a collection. I feel like I need to collect more. I don't know why that is. So that's why I'm focusing more on Hermes because I feel like the bags last longer. They're good quality. They're pretty classic. And the Murakami is like, I love it, but it's very throwback and I don't always find it easy to style, to be honest. It's very like Y2K. So I love it as a collector's piece, but I don't actually know if I would uh, I would wear it, to be honest, like, I would wear this, but uh, I, I'm just worried that if I buy one multicolor piece again, I'm going to go back and buy, like, ten, so that is why I haven't bought it, even though the price is pretty reasonable, 1500 Australian dollars. Good luck getting a new Louis Vuitton bag for that price now, and even if you consider uh, the Marc Jacobs one that's going to come out, which is, like, 800 you pay, you know, I guess almost double, and then you get like an actual Louis Vuitton bag. So yeah, I don't know guys. That's what that that kind of tempted me. My friend recently got a Goyard Mini Anu bag and actually um Maggie also got a, a mini Anu tote bag and it is really cute. I'm really loving this bag. I know that there are a lot of super fakes with this bag as well, but I would love to one day like go to um either Paris or even go back to Japan or something and, and try my luck in the Goyard boutique and try and get a Goyard bag. I don't think I would necessarily buy a Goyard bag from like a reseller. I just think it would be cool to get on a holiday or something. I think my friend got hers from Hong Kong. Um, yeah, I don't know, guys. Like, I would love to dip my toe into Goyard. Actually, my boyfriend has a Goyard card holder and I'm kind of jealous of it. So 
I kind of want a Goyard piece as well, but yeah, I would get the Mini a new tote. This one is so cute. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's around 3000 Australian dollars. So yeah, um, pretty cute bag. I also really like the Fluron, Fluron Mini Hortensia bag. This is a really nice bag. It comes in uh, like pink and it also comes in like green and all these neutral colors as well. And I've heard Fluron is really great quality and the price is pretty reasonable. Again, it's around, I think, seven to 800 Australian dollars. And I just love that little flower motif in the front. Um, I do have a, a mosaic bag, which honestly kind of serves a similar purpose. And it has like a really cool motif in the front as well. But the Fluron bag, I guess because it's a it's a tempting price point, you know. You know, if you buy this, it's not like spending five thousand dollars. It's like under a thousand dollars, so it feels like it's easier to buy, if that makes sense. And I find that the problem with contemporary bags is that once you buy like three, you just want to keep going, and it doesn't seem like you're spending much money. I mean, you are, but like compared to a designer bag, but they all add up. Like if I buy five contemporary bags, it's still like a lot of money. So. Yeah, I, I still really think about these contemporary packs as well. Although they're not as expensive, it could be money I could put towards a Birkin 25 or something like that. Um, and then finally, the Savette Pochette is one that I've been eyeing as well. Uh, Savette is a fairly new brand, so they don't have a lot of, um, yeah, I guess much of a, like a background reputation. I've only real like come to discover them this year, but I do like that little Pochette bag. I think it is so cute. And I love all the colors it comes in and the suede variations. And again, it's like not too bad a price point. It's 1,500-ish Australian dollars, I think, which is, it is a lot, to be honest, like for a brand that I'm not that familiar with. It's not like I've fallen in love with like the history of the brand or the craftsmanship. Like I literally don't know anything about it, but I think the design is really cute. So, honestly, guys, I calculated if I bought all these 10 bags, it would equal... 18 to 19,000 Australian dollars. Can you believe that, guys? Like, and I'm talking about if I found a Victoria bag for like three to four thousand dollars, if I found a plume bag for three to four thousand, the jelly cat bag, the mini garden party, the coach swing bag, the Mark Jacobs Mark, uh, collab, all those bags equal almost, yeah, around 19,000 Australian dollars. And a mini, and a, yeah, like a Birkin 25 is around that much from the store. And if you want to buy Birkin 25, second hand you could be paying you know over twenty thousand even thirty thousand sometimes for just a plain togo leather so what do you think is worth it guys do you think i should buy 10 funky bags or should i buy one birkin 25 i know guys i think that like buying a birkin 25 you i would just buy one i don't know if i would buy multiple across my life because it is just a lot of money to spend on one bag but, you know, guys, sometimes when you're into bags, you do crazy things like that. So, yeah, I'm going to try and resist these other bags for a little bit of time. I know it sounds a bit silly, like, Jess, why don't you just buy one or two of those bags? I don't know, guys. It's just because it all adds up. I, I Like, you just buy one thing, you buy another thing. I'm like that, guys. Like, with Jelly Cats, with, you've seen me with, like, Pop Mart toys. I can't just buy one. I have to buy, like, five, at least, or ten I don't know why I'm like that, guys, but once I, I've, like, if I start loving that coach bag, I might look at other coach bags, and then I might discover that I've bought another five coach bags. So, yeah, I just don't want to tempt myself in that way, but I wanted to share with you guys what I'm into at the moment, and it's fun to talk about these bags anyway. Let me know if you own any of the bags I've mentioned today as well, and thanks for listening to my video today. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys on my next one. Bye!